I shoot a shot. I'm coming in. Hot. Um, my name is Zach Stone. I uh, have a company called Zach Stone Photography. I uh, started it officially in 2020, but leading up to that, probably like three or four years doing photography, chasing the dream. 2020, huh? Man, for some reason I thought you were, well, I guess you were probably shooting before that, but yeah, but started. actually like getting a corporation okay. and paying an attorney to draft all the paperwork and do all that stuff. That was... My accountant said, it's time. Because <laughs> I was doing real estate for 20 plus years before that. Oh. So like photography was just like a hobby, passion Okay. that uh, evolved over over time. When did you stop doing real estate? Probably 2018, I think, is when I kind of started to really take steps away from it. Okay. And devote all my time to shooting photos. Okay. Maybe even earlier than that. I can't That's, remember. Everything's a blur now after 2020. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting because I feel like a lot of people were getting into real estate because things were so, so crazy. I was leaving real estate while everyone was starting to get into it. Well, I was leaving when it was at its worst with the recession and everything that we had. And then a couple of projects my dad and I were working on um, were losing money. And with three kids, I had to figure out some other way to put food on the table okay um so three kids are you married i am i haven't even asked you that 12 yet. years just last week oh congrats thank you what does she do she has the hardest job ever she's a stay-at-home mom mm. taking care of the kids okay taking care of the house taking care of me I say she has four kids. She <laughs> says she has four kids, but uh, she also helps me. She might the, be right now that I just saw all your right, collection. my collection. <laughs> she totally. She is. Might be right. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she does help me with the business aspect on um, shooting photos of families and senior okay. portraits and any anything that has like people in it that. Uh, they need to have those nice skin tones and whatnot. I'm mm -hmm. more of a good landscape photographer, product photographer, uh, food, uh, construction. I've been really doing a lot of construction photography the last couple of years. Yeah. I've and seen I enjoyed the doing video. That. It was sweet. Um, when they were tearing down the North, the Northland building that, whew. yeah, I was just there this morning checking oh, on things. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that project that's, Growing up here in Salem, Nordstrom's, my mom going there, like Nordstrom was a staple of my childhood, mm. um, you know, before school closed and mm -hmm. going there and buying my girlfriend's jewelry from Lynn at the jewelry counter. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. You are more comfortable with landscape, product, construction, um, because I feel like most photographers I know would probably be more on the other side with shooting Shoot the weddings and the people yeah. and the. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that's that's been my newest form of photography. I think shooting people, weddings. I've done. I did some video. I used to do a lot of video stuff, and then I kind of got out of it and was getting into just photos. And now I'm kind of like you know try and balance both mm -hmm. photos and video. But mm -hmm. I try not to do weddings. Yeah, maybe like two or three a year just yeah. for people I know, friends. It's a lot. It is. I mean, the people that I know that do weddings, it's... It's stressful. Dealing with the moms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I seen one of your posts recently. I want to say it had something to do with the Milky Way. And I feel like you won something. Or there was some kind of like Milky Way account. Oh, that... That reshared that photo yeah, of the uh, Starlink satellites. Yeah. Flying through that the was sky. That sweet. Yeah, that was a fun. I actually just saw a memory or another video where I have a, the landscape shot of that. So it's even a wider shot with the, us camping and then the whole Milky Way and then the whole stream of satellites flying through the sky. Okay. I think it was in a time lapse I saw on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a sweet photo. Thanks. Um, so do you sell? Are you shooting that for someone just for yourself? Um, so I, I'd shoot 
photos for a lot of outdoor companies. Okay. And camera gear, uh, Hoya filters. So they make a filter for helping you shoot late at night. Oh, uh, okay. Helps block out some light pollution from like cities and whatnot. So I, you know, while I'm out shooting, I'm also shooting photos of what my camera's shooting to show those products or gotcha. like Grand Trunk Hammocks. They're a hammock company. Um, and I shoot photos for them and then, uh, Schwood sunglasses or Tempercraft water bottles. Or okay. Now I'm shooting photos for cool. So oh. it's, uh, well, that's sweet. it's a constant evolution and I try and work with those kind of companies where I can do one trip and shoot mm. for five or six different companies at once. Yeah. How'd you get into that? Luck, I guess. I don't know. Being, and always people always say it's not luck, but uh, I think just being persistent. Um, like when Instagram first came out, my wife's like, "Hey, you should check out this app," and that was like May 2011. I downloaded it to my phone. I was like, "What is this? Just like a photo editing app?" Like it didn't, it, it hadn't like taken off or like really been like that sharing thing. Yeah, and then it kind of took off, and I kept posting photos and what I do is like find companies I liked or I liked their gear and then I would shoot photos of that and then post it on there and tag them and uh, a couple companies caught on and like asked me to come and help them create content and then some just would reshare it and that's how I really started to grow my Instagram account which I think helped me grow or helped me prove to people like hey this guy can shoot photos you should have mm -hmm. him shoot your photos that's a great little piece of advice that you started with just tagging them, trying to see if there was any interest there. I mean, for people starting out or trying to figure out how do I build a connection or a relationship, um, you literally just started tagging them mm -hmm. and in hopes maybe someone would see that. Yeah. Like, hey, that looks sweet. Let's. And that's how a lot of them even contacted me was like, hey, we've seen your photos. We love what you do. Can we send you a tent or a sleeping bag or pick out a thousand dollars worth of gear and we'll send it to you. Sweet. Yeah. It's been fun. Um, yeah, I've been curious. Uh, like I usually tell people, um, I like to try to like find out something about the people, but not too much. Um, cause, and I've said this, I've interviewed a few friends and it's easier to interview people. I don't know because you already like, know the answers. I, like I know a lot of the answers. <laughs> um, but like with you, I definitely notice that you're out in the forest or whatnot, shooting different things or the product stuff. But I was wondering like, how did he get into that? And exactly what is that structure? Cause most photographers I know, I mean, recently having Lacey on here, um, my daughter's mom is a photographer. Um, I really have just known the weddings and the family stuff. Um, not necessarily the scenic stuff. stuff yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, just to go back, like for me growing up, my dad would take me hunting all the time. So I really developed this love for the outdoors and appreciation for being out in the mountains, out in, you know, away from society and man-made structures. And so that was started at a young age. And then through my teens, twenties into my thirties, I was involved in wakeboarding and wake skating heavily where it was like, that was my passion. That's all I wanted to do. I get off work, I go straight to the river or wherever I could. Lived in Florida for three years, chasing the dream there, and then kind of changed my dream uh, while I was down there because I kind of accomplished what I wanted to accomplish down there. Mm -hmm. And then goals changed, so I moved back. Plus, I miss living in Oregon, and it's nothing like Florida yeah. down there. Yeah. But um, so did the wakeboarding stuff for a long time, filmed it, shot photos of it, and then kind of my body injuries started catching up <laughs> knees. I remember it was, the, it was probably 2012 or 13. I had uh, broke my foot again. And so, and my knee was already hurting. So I was like, I'm going to just take some time off. I'm going to start hiking again. Cause I used to go hunting all the time. And then I kind of quit hunting because I wanted to spend all my time wakeboarding and wake skating. So then I started hiking. And I was like, wow, it's really nice to be out here and wakeboarding and wake skating gave me like, I called it a soul recharge. Mm -hmm. You go out on the water, you're not thinking about anything else. You're just there in the moment reacting to what's happening. Mm -hmm. Kind of like surfing or skateboarding or yep. snowboarding. And, uh, I found that hiking 
gave me that back. So here I am not going to get as hurt. <laughs> and, you know, you, with wakeboarding, it's like a time crunch. Like you got to get it all done. With hiking, it's like you're on no one's schedule. Yeah. As long as you don't have to be back for something. But yeah, yeah you just take your time. And I just started going back out in the woods and uh, took my camera and just started shooting photos. And then it just slowly developed into that. Like Grand Trunk, they were one of the first outdoor companies to reach out to me just because of a photo I took of me hanging out by a lake with a mountain. Mm -hmm. And then it's been like, oh, shoot, I can take these photos of me out here doing stuff and people are going to give me product and then they started paying me money and then it was like, then they asked me to go and do it. So it's been uh, a weird, weird journey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were talking out there, like you had asked if I had any sponsors for this and, and I said no. um, And I'm not sure what that'll look like down the road. I do want to monetize this and do this, be able to make a living from it and do it and, you know, go on site and kind of what you're doing, you know, you're not just at a location, you're all over the place. Um, but that it'll feel weird when I start do getting paid to do it. Um, just with right now, I mean, I make all the rules and no one can tell me anything and keep those stipulations. (laughs) You do what you, that's what they got to pay you for. They got to pay you to be you, not someone else. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, thinking about your journey, like that, that must have been because it's kind of like what we were talking about, where you just started doing it because you had a passion, a love for it, um, probably found some purpose out of it in your life, um, which is how I'm feeling with this. Um, but then to have someone say, hey, I'll give you money to do something you were doing anyways, something you enjoyed, um, that was probably a, a strange but beautiful feeling yeah. of, man, I can, I can make a living doing this. Um, and honestly with the products you're talking about, a lot of that makes sense to have it out in what it's intended for. Um, I find it more interesting seeing some of the stuff like the hammocks or whatnot, or you have it next to like a Creek or stream. I mean, for me, that's more like, yeah, I'm kind of paying attention to more to that than if it was just like in this room, right. Hung up. Um, yeah, I think seeing it out there in action. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make the photo look like it wasn't on purpose, but it just happened to be like, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. And I took a photo. Yeah. But sometimes it's set everything up to take the photo, (laughs) but try and make it look like (laughs) you didn't set everything up to take a photo. Right. Yeah. So I'm not a big hunter, but my whole family is, I mean, literally I'm like the one dude I got some some female cousins that are out there slaying bucks, <laughs> and I just never got into it. I was always stuck in basketball season mode, um, but I see this brand all over the place now. Um, how did did they just see what you were doing? Did you reach out to them? Kind of a both thing. Like, um, that's another brand that I've been trying to get involved with is Kuyu. And they're big into hunting. I've bought a lot of their stuff and use it for hunting. Well, I just got recently back into hunting a couple years ago. Um, But I've been using their gear. And what's really cool is a lot of hunting gear Mm -hmm. is perfect for an outdoor photographer. Because we're still putting ourselves out there in those elements. Except I'm just holding a camera instead of a gun. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I try and, like I said, you know, wear it, tag it promote it right um just for myself and if they like it cool but cool reached out because they wanted to share some photo i had of a mountain with the sunset and i was like oh yeah go ahead um and if you guys ever need any product photos i own a bunch of your pants and shorts and they're like oh you should check out our outsiders program here's the link fill out the form and put in your application I was sitting there literally getting ready to go on a trip in Bend with my buddy. We were eating lunch and I filled it out. By the time we got in the car and we were almost out of cell service, I got an email saying that I was accepted. So went out, shot some photos, got back, finally figured out everything with them and uh, been rocking and rolling with them. Just they have kind of like a structure where you do so much and then you get to level up and then you do so much you get to level up and now i've like leveled up three times now with them okay i just realized i'm confused what's the other brand the hunting brand you just referenced kuyu 
Kuyu. Yeah, the that's K-U- the one that I see all my K-I family or... members and dad and okay. That is the hunting brand. Yeah, K U U I or something like that. Or okay. I U. Okay. And this is what this brand? is cool. And what do they do? Outdoor gear. Not so much hunting, but just outdoor okay. um gear or even just like everyday gear basically okay like these shorts are theirs okay as well are they like pacific northwest company or no they're out of utah okay it's amazing how many companies are out of utah like mountain ops they're out of utah um grand trunk they're out of utah okay okay yeah Yeah, that uh, i was like man i think i'm thinking of something different but it is ku something something yeah okay that's what it is (laughs) okay i almost wore that shirt (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> all right um well sweet it's i mean and what like what do you envision for the future like what like when we were talking about where i want to take this what are your kind of dreams and goals for what you got going on like i feel like they're always changing um basically it's always like i just want to make it to the next month <laughs> or the next year and yeah. keep doing what i'm doing because you know a lot of times Photos are a one thing, like a, it's a one time family photo shoot. It's a one time wedding. So you got to keep, keep putting yourself out there to get those new clients in. Uh, I've been lucky that I've worked with reoccurring clients like Tolkien Construction. They've been one of my long time uh, clients that I've not only shoot photos for them, but I help run their social media. Mm. And then I have a couple other clients like that where I'm not only shooting photos, but I'm running their social media. Okay. So I get to kind of help create what we need to post and share with people. Okay. And then I'll have the clients where they run their own social media, but I will help create their content. And I've kind of tried to do more of just creating content for people and letting them post it. Maybe do more, um, what's it called? Consulting work where I'm like, okay, this is the structures, the steps you want to take when you make your video and stuff. Um, I got a bunch of different, friends that I've helped them where now I see them posting all the time. I'm like, yeah, you're doing it. Good job. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't have to anymore. (laughs) I can focus on other stuff. Um, so I'd kind of like to, you know, do more content creating less social media management. Um, and then there's times I've noticed where I'll get asked to do a shoot and I'm already busy or I'm going to be out of town or it's just something I really don't want to do. But I know a lot of people who are upcoming photographers that are hungry for that and they want to go out and do that. Or maybe they can do more sports orientated photography or videography. And so I'll pass it to them. And just recently I was like, why am I just giving it to them? I should like have them come to me and we'll like come together and I'll be like a, not an agency, but kind of like, Hey, here's little jobs you can do. Yeah. And uh, like a brokerage, like a brokerage. Yeah. Like I get a little piece, a little percentage and, You go do your work. I know you can do what you need to do. And if you have questions or need help, let me know. I can do that. Yeah. So I'm kind of. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, you're finding the work for them. You can be giving them advice on how to perform it or put it together. Edit it. Like all of that. I mean, that's certainly something you could charge for. (laughs) Yeah. So that's kind of like the, where I kind of see myself going in the future is like figuring out something like that. And then my wife and I, since we do uh, family photos, we're talking to a few families that we shot with that are like, man, we haven't shot in like five years or we haven't done photos. And since the baby, since the kids were babies Mm -hmm. and I just clicked me like, why don't we do like a subscription service where you pay a yearly flat fee and maybe you pay for like five years. And then once a year we reach out to you, we say, Hey, Mm. let's schedule a weekend or after work evening shoot Mm -hmm. here's some color combinations you should use and we'll pick out the location and we'll take care of everything you just get dressed and show up yeah yeah i mean with photos probably most of us are like me and my wife um because she i didn't know who Lacey was but my wife had tracked like on her social media or whatnot um and uh and how that happened was Lacey shared something of someone I had interviewed and said something about like, my friends are awesome. And then I was like, Hey, Adrian, is this the the person that like, you've always said, like, I really like her style or whatnot, the vibe. She's like, yeah. So then I just sent Lacey a message. It was like, Hey, you want to come on a podcast? Um, and she's like, yeah. Lacey's um, awesome. Yeah. I, I've 
we've sent each other work and like she's actually shot our family photos. My wife has oh. had her shoot ours before. And so, yeah, I, I loved watching Lacey's podcast and I've known some of that stuff she talked about and then some she does didn't yeah or didn't know that she talked about. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. And, and I was telling her, um, I was like, yeah, me and my wife, we always talk about like, we need to do some more photos. We just, it's just something that, you know, we just don't get around to. And I think most people are like that, like with insurance, right? Like most people are like, I don't really want to talk about insurance unless I have to. I don't really want to switch insurance because it's kind of a pain and I have to think about it and I just don't really want to. So I totally understand like with your, with the business model and what you're talking about with subscription of you know, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And yet we know we want to, we know we need to do some updated, Hey, Riley is going into seventh grade tomorrow. She's taller than Adrian is now. Like we, we should get some current photos, professional photos, document these changes in life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just getting around to scheduling something, let's make it happen. So that's an interest. I haven't heard a photographer talk about a subscription model, um, where then you would be reaching out, Hey, here's some ideas. Here's would fall coming work? up. We got colors are popping at this one location. Yeah. Yeah. Here, kind of like take the headache schedule. out of it. Yeah. Here's our schedule. Like almost just like, you know, making it just, just say yes or no. Yep. <laughs> like, making it as easy as possible for them. As it we'll can coordinate be. all this stuff. Just say yes or no. Um, yeah, that could be, that could work. Yeah. Just got to put it together. Yeah. <laughs> got to find the time to, yeah. to when I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all the cool stuff you're doing now. Um, take me back as far as you want to take me back and really the journey of, I mean, you said you were in Florida, but then you came back here. Um, but, you know, what does that look like? How long did you do real estate? I'm still very intrigued, honestly, that you got out of real estate <laughs> when you did. So, I mean, like... I graduated high school in 95, 1995 for anyone who <laughs> doesn't know that that was before 2000. Um, graduated, tried to go to college, went to Chemeketa for almost a full year. Couldn't, couldn't do it. I uh, had really bad ADD in school, like focusing in class, getting homework done was just, I was not good at it or I just didn't care to do it. it didn't inter- interest me that much. So I tried to do Shemekita for a year and I was like, you know, I'm wasting time, wasting money because I was end up skipping classes. So I got back into construction, worked for a couple of different construction companies, uh, finally settled with CD Reading, who is now one of my clients that I okay. shoot photos for, uh, shop or did construction with them up until I was 20. And then my dad, who's been in real estate ever since the seventies, he came to me and was like, Hey, I know you want to get into real estate someday I now have this opportunity where I need to hire someone. Would you like to come and start working for me? I said, sure. Yeah. What are we doing? So after I turned 20, got into real estate school, got my license and I started helping him locate all the Hollywood videos around Oregon. Okay. Minus the Portland area. Well, he was too busy to really do it. So he showed me how to do it once. And then I pretty much had that all to myself figuring out um would they hollywood be like okay we want to go to astoria all right i'll drive up there i'll look at all the locations what's available where's the best place to be paint them a huge giant picture in a packet and then turn that in then they would make their decision and go forward then we'd help negotiate the lease and help you know get it going and the ti's and everything and like help watch the whole process okay and your dad had a relationship with Hollywood yeah video? so he actually helped the original owner Mark Waddles uh, locate like his second and third Hollywood video stores like the one in Corvallis that was there forever that was like maybe the fifth Hollywood video store ever okay and um, was that the guy that built or started to build that big that huge house giant yep. house on the river there yeah okay. and then all the boaters who would use his beach or the beach in front of his property they'd use it. And then he kind of gotten a big pissing match with them and the city. And then he said, Mm. fine, I'll just leave the house there and go somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But he still owned it. I think it's sold now and someone else owns it. Yeah. Um, I think so. That's been forever ago on that. Yeah. Yeah. That was his house. Okay. And I mean, 
the whole story, like that guy, he started with um, the 7-Elevens, movie rentals in 7-Eleven. And mm. then he's like, I'm going to make it its own store. And people are like, you're crazy. No one's going to go to a store <laughs> just to rent movies. And, you know, it's just like one of those one of those things of the journey That's where it takes wild. you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he had his whole family there living in an apartment, like small means, like just barely surviving. And then, boom, multi-million dollar company. And then sold it and was yeah. gone retired man you think about that like stepping out like i'm i'm renting or selling uh movies out of a 7-eleven and then well wonder if we just make our own store where right. there's just movies in here <laughs> oh man hey it worked for him it was he it was, made some money I from mean, it it's been crazy what looking back at the change in technology yeah and how because i'm constantly in a revolving technology field um but even with music on you know eight tracks and then cassette tapes and then cds and then mp3s and like nowadays who has a cd player (laughs) here's a cd go play it i can't i i actually i'm not kidding you just yesterday um i um so uh this week this past week has been the oregon state fair and what is now I consider a friend of mine, his name's Jacob Westfall. He opened every night um, uh, playing um, for, I think like, um, who did he open for? The Beach Boys on Saturday, Scotty nice. McCreary Friday. He opened all week long and then he would play some sets on the rooftop bar there. Um, but he gave us, me and my wife, one of his CDs, uh, which ironically, my wife's car has, no, both of our cars have a CD player. Um, but then I got home and my, I think I told you my parents live with us and I know my mom will really like his music. And I go, mom, uh, do you got a CD player downstairs? And then she was like a CD player. (laughs) And she's like, no, can I just play it on my phone? (laughs) And I was like, you know what? That's, um, they have one in their vehicle. Um, but it just, it was funny when I really thought like, I don't think we have a CD player in the house. Um, but yeah, I mean the technology and especially in your guys' field with the new cameras and lenses and sensors and it's constantly like, I was just thinking the other day, it's like anyone who most businesses, like you have your initial investment and your equipment in the beginning and then that's it. You might evolve like 10 years from now if something new comes out. But I feel like in being a photographer, a videographer, like all these new gimbals you got the drones and you got the lenses and then the cameras and the filters and the tripods and the motion control stuff. And yeah, yeah it's constantly, yeah. constantly yeah. changing and evolving. It's like, they just want you to give them money, <laughs> just feed them. I, I wish I was a manufacturer of that type of <laughs> technology. Too. Cause in six months that camera is going to be out to date. Yep. It'll be something new. You'll have to go to focal point in <laughs> Dallas and be like, Hey, I got these. Can I trade them in? Which is, that's cool for those kind of businesses. Right. Actually, speaking of um, Daniel, who does all the editing, he's there now. And now he's he's getting something. And then he's coming here in a little bit. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I love that store. Yeah. They're, they're probably, they're one of the big reasons I am how I've gotten to today. Kind of like how you said, go back to the beginning of the story. Um, So yeah, when I was in high school, I actually took photography as a course and I got an F. Okay. I failed it. Kind of same reasons. I wasn't really showing up for class because it was photography. Kind of like taking pottery. Mm-hmm. Like it's just an elective mm-hmm. to right. kind of get a grade. So right. didn't really do good um, in that class. And then I think it was 1998, I got my first digital camera. And switching from film to digital was like the game changer for me because I could instantly see my result and be like, okay, I don't like this or I do like that. Yeah. So fast forward to... Instagram, needing a camera. Um, I was shooting on Canon for a while and I wanted to get into shooting astrophotography, like mm. the Milky Way and the stars. Okay. But all the lenses I had weren't that good. So I went out to Focal Point to Mike when he owned it and I was like, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. He's like, this is a good, cheap lens. It was like maybe 300 bucks and it has the aperture setting for you to shoot the Milky Way and get those shots. So I got the lens Kind of practice with it, did terrible. 
Then I finally planned a trip down to Crater Lake. My first time to Crater with some friends, and we backpacked up to this one spot because it was still winter, mm-hmm. early early spring, late winter. So there's still lots of snow. Parts of the roads were still closed, so we didn't have to hike too far at that time. Now the rules have completely changed. You can't even park on the rim and go backpacking. You have to park like three miles away. Okay. But uh, we camped out. I set up my camera, was shooting the Milky Way, had the International Space Station fly over mm. during the photos got back edited the photos like oh what is this is that the space station because i didn't know at the time and i submitted the photo to this website called spot the station uh-huh. and one of the astronauts on the space station saw the photo and retweeted it from his twitter while he was in space and what? i had barely had a little bit of twitter experience i had an account so I was tagged, and then when I woke up that next morning, like my Twitter had like five thousand reshares, and like it was like crazy. Wow. And then uh, the Statesman Journal kind of picked that up, that story, and uh, did an article about it. And then um, I kind of just kept getting other people's interests to reach out to me. And then this guy named Bob Shaw, he was this great historian photographer like he taught at George Fox College but he just knew like everything about shooting photos and uh, he offered to teach me what he knew so I went over to his house one day and for like three hours he just like explained to me what aperture was what ISO Mm. was and like like my brain hurt afterwards but I was so (laughs) grateful for it and then he even helped me like edit my photos and teach me about editing and everything because i pretty much all self-taught since I got an F in high school. They, I mean, they didn't teach me anything. <laughs> At least I didn't learn anything. <laughs> Maybe if you were there all the days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I'd reach out to other photographers that were really good at Astro and ask them for pointers, and they were very helpful in teaching or giving the information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so uh, that photo happened, and I kind of was like, hmm, I want to do this more often. And then... I started, you know, planning these trips to go to different places and shoot. And then that's when those companies started to kind of reach out as well Okay. and, uh, and document so I could document nature and products at the same time. Hey, that's, I mean, it's genius. And it, it's crazy how it happened too, because, um, I was up at this one spot just outside of gates and I could see Mount Jefferson and I could see every ridge in between me and Mount Jefferson. And I was like, I think it was like 2013 or 14. I was like, I want to explore every ridge all the way to Jeff. So over time I did. And then we had the 2020 fires and mm. all that burned up. And then this is so crazy too, because going back to focal point, uh, Oregon department of forestry reached out to them just this last year and said, Hey, we're looking for a photographer that might have photos of the areas mm. that got burned. And immediately the new owner, Nate, he's like, call Zach Stone. So she got on the phone or she emailed me and I was like, yeah, I got photos. And they're like, well, how would you like to sign up a contract with us? And we're, you will redocument the growth, the regrowth of the forest through the, those areas that we have picked out. Wow. And I was like, uh, <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> I was going to do it anyways, yeah. but uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and you're going to give me a key? <laughs> so that that's wow. something that just happened this past uh, winter. Wow. Um, got that. And so now I'm going back up into these areas where I've been before, and now I'm re-photographing them with the burn areas. And then we're kind of documenting. We're trying to find certain spots that will re-shoot the next five, 10, up 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and document the regrowth and kind of figure out like what is the best way to bounce back from a forest fire or even how can we manage these forests to help not have such a devastating fire like this again occur. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, that's not just for the beauty and kind of, but also the functionality of, Hey, for the future, yeah. You know, how can we how better can we, mitigate? How can we better this so we don't you know? have to have families lose everything? Yeah. Loss of life. And because that, that fire was, yeah. I mean, we're just coming up on the anniversary of it too here in a couple of days. Yeah. So, wow. Man, well, that's sweet. Um, so, back to Hollywood video, you're helping your dad. Um, 
And so then you're getting into real estate. Getting into real estate. So I did real estate for like 20 years. And one thing I learned in real estate is like you're working a long time for the project to be done with so you can get paid. A lot of times you're putting in six months, year and a half, two years worth of work and effort and money. And then the project falls apart and you don't get paid. And I think I just had a little too many of those. And I was like, I'm fucking done with real estate. Like I'm done working on this. It was fun for a while, but it was time for a change. And at that time too, I was doing photos and kind of getting paid for photos. And I was like, dude, I can shoot photos, hand them the photos. They hand me a check. I don't have to wait for anything. Sometimes they'll even pay me before I shoot the photos. (laughs) I like those. (laughs) And, uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to just, see how many days I can commit to photography and not commit to the office at real estate and kind of just slowly trickled in there. And I got a couple big, big, uh, deals where I sold like a bunch of metal prints to a hospital and got a big chunk of money. I was like, okay, I think I could actually do this. Okay. And then there was those moments where I was like, how am I going to do this (laughs) as you're sitting there trying to figure out the next step. But, Mm -hmm. um, so what's, what's, uh, like we kind of talked about earlier, what's driving, I mean, it still blows my mind that you got out of real estate when you did, um, when everything has just been crazy. I mean, I know it's slowing down a little bit now, but back then it was yeah. still last couple of years. It's been crazy, <laughs> man. You could, you can make a lot of money doing that. Um, but what's really driving the photography thing The I want to make this thing work. So when I was kind of doing that whole, uh, transition, I was watching uh, a couple of YouTube videos or channels, uh, Casey Neistat. I found his videos by accident, just trying to get a drone review of the Phantom four. And I found his video and I was like, that was so entertaining to watch him try and fly that drone and talk about it. So I watched more of his videos and kind of learned his story and how, where he's come from with filmmaking and the things he gave up and like watching his struggle and his sacrifices kind of like said, I said to myself, I can do that. I can, I can sacrifice. So like at night <clears throat> after I, when I was still doing real estate or do my job during the day, then at night I'd be at home laying in bed, editing photos till midnight, one o'clock. And I just do both jobs for a while until I finally didn't have to stay up that late. Even though sometimes I still feel like I get more work done when I do stay up that late because <laughs> no one's bothering you. Right. Um, but his his channel was a big inspiration to me. Gary V, like I, I watched a lot of his stuff and yep. him just saying, just go for it. Yep. And, uh, you know, with my wake skating when I moved to Florida, it was like, that was a chance I took, but I went and did it and I found out I could do it. And I think in life, anything is possible if you want it. And if you want to risk everything, sacrifice everything, devote everything to it, it can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like your podcast. I mean, it was an idea and then you just did it and then here <laughs> it is. And then like you were talking about the evolution of it, how it's changing. Mm-hmm. That's just the natural way. And yeah, just for doing it. Yeah. This has been, um, by nature, I'm more pessimistic, if you will. I mean, which, you know, being, doing some insurance um, that kind of fits that as like a risk advisor. Like what are all the bad things that are going to, it's not about what are all the good things that are going to happen. What are the bad things that are going to happen? How do we protect against that? Yeah. Watch out for it. Um, But with this, I, I had to tell myself, just go do it. Just start doing it. It was because typically I'm a guy that will sit there and think about it and keep thinking and keep, well, it, it might not this, or this might not, and this was something that I that I would I knew was inside of me. I knew something was there. Um, it's the one thing that I light up about. I mean, it's you look forward to it. Yeah, it's I yeah. really enjoy it. But starting it, I certainly I just told myself just start doing it. I don't who knows it's going to evolve like everything else. But just start doing it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, And there's something to be said about, I almost feel like in life, especially this day and age with technology and everything, you could almost, um, if you're willing to do it long enough, stick with it, have a passion purpose for it, um, you could almost monetize anything at some point Mm -hmm. if you do it long enough. I mean, I think about like what you've done 
and just shooting the stars and that I, someone like me, I would be like, well, I have no idea how you could monetize that scenic stuff. And then now with you saying, well, I tagged this person or the astronaut retweeted it or, and some of that stuff you didn't know, you just started doing it. Yeah. You just, I love doing this. I'm going to start doing this and then look at the doors that have opened. Now you have a key to the forest. Um, and there's, there's just something to be said about pursuing that what's inside of you and just starting. Yeah. And it's cliche to say like, follow your passion. Um, I know it's been talked about here often, but yeah, it, that's, that's what drives, I think. And I think people can see the passion in you. Like I, I know for a fact, people have always told me like, you're so passionate about this. You're so passionate about this. And I'm like, really? I just love doing it. And I, I didn't even really know what passion was in the beginning, you know, when I was younger and then finally like, okay, I guess this is passion. Yeah. Cause yeah, you, like you just think about it all the time when you're not doing it, you're thinking about it. When you're sleeping, you're dreaming about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is this is the one I've said this numerous times, but it's like the one thing. Um because I've always thought like, how do you know, like, what are the affirmations that will tell you, like, yo, this is your thing? And like what you're saying, you've had people in your life that are like, Hey, we clearly can see this is your thing. I think it'll just exude like for people that are sitting there thinking right now, like, you know, what is that? I don't know what my thing is. I'm not in that my passion or purpose right now, you know, and it's like I just had to think for me, well, what do I naturally do? What do I just naturally do in life that I don't get paid for? I just kind of do it. Well, one was just talking to people, new people, asking them questions. My wife has said, Trav, when we meet new people, you get information out of them. It blows my mind what they end up sharing with you. And so that was part of this of why well, I always just sit and ask people questions anyways. I'm curious, like not just of what you do, but why do you do that? Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the things with this. I'm like, well, I naturally do that. So how do I turn that into a thing? Um, I love hearing all different stories from all different people doing business insurance it's allowed me to see a lot of different farmers, city boys, people that make widgets, I just a lot of different things. Um, and most of the time, I some aspect of it, I find very interesting. Like, you know, how does milk get into the carton? It's <laughs> it, There's a whole process for that. Um, so then incorporating that of, you know, let's talk with people that do these different things, learn a little bit about that, and then also learn their story um, I just thought that could be a fun conversation because most people like talking about, you know, their thing or whatever they do or their story. Um, and then also how can we help others? You know, how can like you, your story of, cause I've looked at your photos and I have thought, how did he get into that? Like, how do you like, cause I would, I would think, well, if I want to do photography, I have to go shoot people. Like I have to do weddings if I'm going right. to monetize this at all, that's how I would think. Yeah. So to hear that you naturally just kind of, I started shooting this and then I tagged the person and then it started to get more purposeful with, you know, what you were doing. Um, that kind of information's great to hear. Cause I would have never thought about that. Yeah. And my first like actual photography job was working for the alibi where I shot, I was running their social media okay. and I was shooting photos, but they were the first ones who paid me. And then Dalkey saw what I was doing for them. And I've known them. I've known Dalkey. I've grown up with them. My dad went to high school with Larry and Tom okay. and them. So there's been that relationship there, but I've been asked before, like, Hey, how do I get started in photography? And I tell them, find someone, you know, that owns a business that needs photos, shoot photos for free for the first time, give them to them and then say, Hey, I'd love to come back and help you shoot more photos but I'm going to charge you X. And then once someone pays you X, the next time someone wants you to shoot photos, you say it's Y. And then once you get someone pays you for Y, and then you say the next person, well, it's Z. And then that's how you find out what you should be paid and what people are willing to pay you for your stuff mm -hmm. or your work. That's, yeah, that is great advice. That, um, yeah, Lacey spoke to that, how like she eventually knowing her worth and as, as, 
her the quality and whatnot got better and better and charging accordingly um cole spoke about how when he started his practice um he didn't take over a practice which typically in that industry of dentistry orthodontics yeah um even what me and olga olga are doing with insurance uh, typically you're buying a, a practice or a book of business to help sustain you to you know um, Cole said he just got a business loan and then he was like, how do I get clients? And then he went to his old elementary school. They had some time that, I don't know, volunteers or you come talk with kids or whatnot. Job fair. Kind and of thing. yeah. And he would just start talking about orthodontic stuff. And he was like, I did that for like a year, just kind of going and just kind of free, free information. And this is who I am. This is what these, you know. And he's like, then I would get people that were like, oh, hey, I saw you at my kids, whatever. Um, So what you're saying, that's goal to go. Well, just go do it for free at first. Mm -hmm. Just find, you know. Especially if you're not that good and no one's paying you. I mean, you have to like just going out in the woods and shooting those photos. Those companies saw the result. They didn't see what it took to get there, but they saw the result and they liked the result and they would pay you for it. Yeah. And then, yeah, just the businesses too, like restaurants and stuff. I, I went around to a bunch of different restaurants for a while. Just, hey, I'll order something and then I'll just shoot the photo. And then I'll post it. Hey, I just had lunch here. And then some are like, well, that's a really good photo. Would you mind coming back and shooting this certain item that's on special for the week? And uh, and then I'll, sometimes it was just like, hey, here's a free lunch or here's a free dinner. Right. Or here's, you know, 50 bucks. And right. I was like, all right, this this is cool. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, that is gold information for people that want to get into photography yeah you don't you don't have to shoot weddings you don't have to shoot senior photos if you just love photography just pick find someone who needs photos and then offer to help them yeah that's another big key word that Casey Neistat taught me is help how can I help you because a lot of people want you to help them right and like I'm a photographer and I think if I work with you I'm going to gain so much information well yeah but what are you bringing to me right and, uh, right. so yeah, I try and always answer with how can I help you? Yeah. Or I'd love to help you. Yeah. 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 That's, um, me and Olga, uh, have been thinking about, um, as, as we've starting and we're marketing and trying to grow our business here. Um, we've been thinking about those kind of things, like in terms of like how we're communicating our, our brand, our yeah. style, who we are. Um, and like one of the things and kind of being different than I guess the next insurance per- person. Um, I-, I was telling you earlier, we're going to do a little grand opening, uh, on the 15th of October, probably have hopefully weather permitting, um, some cornhole, a little barbecue, uh, maybe some music, um, and just some clients and friends and come check out the office, this space. Um, but put together a little video. Daniel's going to put together a little video. Um, which he might be having a baby that day. Um, so I might have to tap into some other people we know that make videos. They have cameras. Um, but, uh, um, but I was thinking like for the little end piece of our video, I don't want it just to be like, like call us today or like the typical normal one. But I was thinking something like we would love to meet you or we would let lo- some kind of connection. Personal some thing. Kind, yeah. yeah. Some kind of, so what you're saying. I like that. Like, you know, how can I help you? Um, yeah. Let us help you plan for the future and be protected or be safe. Yeah. 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 Well, what else did I miss? What else do people need to know about you? (sighs) Other Um, other than your collection. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people do know about that action figure collection. Yeah. Um, I'm, I have a, I have a action figure toy account on Instagram also. Oh, so I have like a, about my main account and then I have a kind of a behind the scenes account, which is like my camera. So, uh, you can go and see like where my camera sits and like kind of more behind the scenes of what it looks like before you actually just see that finished polished photo. And then I have the, the toy account, the Zach, the Lego, no. Yeah. Zach, the Lego maniac okay. is the account. Okay. But I do more than just Legos on there. Yeah. But Legos are definitely one of my, strong suits (laughs) you got a lot of strong so so zach showed me some photos and video before we started this 
He also brought these four turtles behind me, which is awesome, because he noticed I had one turtle um, uh, from my aunt, um, and she got me another turtle, and I told her, like, I need all four of those, and then I'm, I told her that like 10 days ago. Oh, seriously? I need all four of those. We were at lunch <laughs> together, and then Zach brings all four of them today, so I put them up there. I only just saw Raphael's legs, and I was like... I wonder, I wonder which, I almost thought like that was those turtles. And I was like, I know I got all four of them in a bin in the garage that I want to get rid of because <laughs> I have no room in my garage. Just like everyone's garage. I think just no room for anything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a perfect home for them right there. I think so. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're welcome. Glad they went to a good home. Yes. Yeah. Now, whenever you watch, you know, uh, my cam camera angle, you'll see yeah, the four little, turtles up there. Little, little piece of my kids. I'll have to um, I'll have to take you up once I get the the other spot set up. Yeah, take yeah. You up Let me know. You can see her her space. I think maybe you I can her, bring her something. Yes, <laughs> I think you and her will really have some good conversation. My my desk in my house where I work in that room that I showed you. Um, I have like Boba Fett's uh, Lego UCS starship okay. built, and then I have like his head, and then on the wall behind there's a bunch more Star Wars and Boba Fett's one of the big main figs okay. that I like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she does too. Um, well, man, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and Absolutely. sharing your story. And Thanks for the invite. It's been fun watching all the other podcasts because I've known Lacey and then Chad Montgomery and uh, let's see, oh, Jason Conrad. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's been fun to see those. Yeah. And if you got anyone that you think, um, you know, that would want to share their story or. Absolutely. I So, uh, before 2020, my buddy Eddie Zapian and I, we actually were doing a, um, YouTube show kind of where we would eat hot sauce on tacos and it was okay. called talk about it. Okay. So we interviewed a couple guys and we, I just actually watched one of them just the other day. Uh, when he, my buddy Nate Wixom, he works at Wallery's now okay. as a manager, but he was at Annette's managing. And so we did a talk about Is, it there. Does he have red? Yes. Not red. Maybe yeah. it's red. Hair. Oh, it's red. Okay. He's a red headed. He is wonderful a, he kid. He's a fun guy. <laughs> I remember him at Annette's. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Loud, okay. obnoxious. He was. He was fun. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> I miss that part of him because now at Wallery's he can't really like throw shit at everyone like you could there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're we're in a workout group together at uh, West Coast Strength. Um, a okay. bunch of us meet together at five thirty in the morning, and so we then we have a text group, about twenty of us, and uh, he's always in there. Okay, flinging. Um, speaking of that, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the owner, I've had multiple Alex, people tell me Alex Whitaker. I need to interview him. Um, He'd be great. Okay. For this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. If the next time you see him, if you reference yeah. this, um, and I'll reach out to him on social media, but I've had a few people say like he's had quite the story of what he's built there with his company. Absolutely. And, From where he's come and yeah. the struggles he's had. Yeah. 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 The injuries and yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Just like all of us that play hard with our bodies <laughs> and get older <laughs> and get older. That's the thing, man. Like being now 46, which is just crazy to think that I've actually made it this far. Um, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Yeah. Um, especially having kids, it's like you want your kids to be in a safe place, safe community and thinking like that's what's changed so much in me is like getting more involved with the community and trying to make things in place to, so kids and families are safer here in yeah. this town and, and, and businesses too, because if the businesses, if it's not safe for the families to go out, businesses will fail. Yeah. I mean, downtown is a clear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely see you out in the community a lot. Um, so I assume that's been very purposeful of you. It, it has, it's it, like, I used to go to city council meetings when we were talking about the bridge or the homeless issues or, you know, something I felt passionate about that I wanted to voice my concerns. And because I feel like so many people, have the concern, but they just won't go and say it. Yeah. Just like, you know, you have an idea, but you're not, you're too afraid to start it. Like you got to voice your opinion or put it out there right. so people can react or get behind it. You right. know? Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I've noticed. Like I'll say something 
on social media and I'll be like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But then I'll run into someone like, Oh my God, you said exactly what I was thinking. I'm so glad you did. And I was like, Oh good. <laughs> I thought this conversation would go the other way. <laughs> yeah. That, um, having, having Cole on here, um, he certainly on his social media will bring up some topics and get conversations going. And, um, but he, he does a good job of trying to see both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you certainly can That's how have you, your you gotta, side, but you gotta be, yeah. I mean, but you can have what you think and believe. Um, but if you can still be able to, Hey, I see where you're coming from and I see your points, you know, this is still I'm not where I'm agree at. With it, but yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But yeah, it's when those people that have those views that don't confine with you, but they can't let you be who you are. Right. Yeah. I think we need more of that. Just let people be who they are and not shove it down everyone's throat that you got to change because I am different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this podcast, one of the layers to it uh, I've wanted was, I think, you know, if you take the time to listen to these or watch these, um, what most viewers, listeners would find is that really, and this is just my personal belief, that most of us are more alike than we are different. Yeah. If we can get past some of the big barriers, religion and politics, and most of us in our day-to-day Anim- lives... Eating animals or not eating animals. <laughs> <laughs> most of us in our daily lives kind of want this. They want to be protected and loved and, you know, like... Safe. Yeah. Have a good day. Yes. Have good things happen, not just like be out there trying to cause harm and stuff. Yeah. Right. And so that's been a layer to to this of trying to communicate that, like, especially locally, hey, let's, let's, you know, hear people's stories and maybe it'll give you a different perspective on them. Maybe it's like, oh, wow, that's, I could see why they think that way. I didn't right. know that about yeah. them. Something traumatic they had happened in their childhood. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which just makes things more relatable and mm-hmm. more human and maybe we are more alike than not. Yeah. Um, I saw a photo, I think last week, it was funny. I was laughing. Um, or maybe two weeks ago, the, you guys were, the chamber was, um, at, um, SVN's new okay, yeah. location. The ribbon cutting. Yes. And I was just laughing cause I was like, okay, I already did Jason's episode. Uh, Jacob's coming soon. Zach's coming. Sparkman's coming. <laughs> and so that photo just, it made me laugh because I was like... All of us were there. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, do you know Kurt Arthur or Nick Williams? Um, I know Nick. Okay. Yeah, I know Nick. Um, I don't know Kirk. He did, Kirk started following uh, the chair on Instagram. And then I thought that would be cool to, because he, does he own that? Or how does that, I don't know how that works in their space. He owns, I think, I don't know if they bought the building. They might have bought that building and then he's running his office out of there. Okay. Um, but so when I started real estate in 1998 or seven, Kurt was doing real estate too. So we were actually okay. kind of like, we were running to each other in the office and even out of the office. And uh, it's been a fun journey seeing his journey yeah. and then mine and how we have, you know, now he has his own office and own business and succeeding very yeah. nicely and and he does commercial real estate right yeah they do more commercial industrial stuff like that okay. not so much residential okay. and that's what i worked on it was commercial oh. doing development stuff not okay. not residential okay yeah yeah i kind of knew nick when he was at the chamber okay um and he was ceo for a while right yeah he was of the chamber and then he jumped over with svn guys yeah yeah got into real estate yeah yeah yeah, I'll have to have both of those guys on, actually. Um, I do know Nick. I've been around him a few times, but not Kirk. He's a good Kurt. guy. Um, yeah. Yeah, B, I, I, don't, I haven't had any commercial real estate people on. So that'd be interesting kind of hear the, the state of affairs in that space, too. Yeah, it's right different. Now. I mean, it, it definitely is affected by everything, but it's also its own animal. Yeah. Because you can still have people not buying homes, but you still have to have businesses survive. But with 2020 that changed a lot of aspects too, because a lot of people had to go remote and yeah. they didn't need a storefront anymore or right. they just couldn't survive. Um, right. with people not going to stores and people only ordering online. Right. Yeah. It has been strange though, because most realtors that I talked to, um, it didn't really, it just, 
some of it looked different, but didn't really slow. I mean, there was still commercial space was still doing really well. Yeah. Well, and even in construction, like all the construction companies I work with, they're all still busy. Yeah. They're all still busy slamming with even the price of lumber when it blew up. And now with the price of fuel and everything costing more, there's people are still need stuff built. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the time, bro. Thanks for uh, letting me come and hang out. Thanks, man. Yeah.